A tractor is only as useful as the equipment that's hitched onto it. Power takeoff mechanisms from the tractor engine to the working parts of agricultural machines have made this tandem a truly universal working tool. The most common of these devices is the power takeoff shaft or PTO shaft. However, before the PTO became a generally accepted element of the tractor design, various other methods were used to transmit rotary motion to the working machines. At the beginning of the 20th century, when the tractor was just challenging the horse's place in agriculture, there already existed a number of machines and implements that required rotary motion to perform work. Among mobile machines, these were mowers, reapers, binders, manure spreaders, and some others. In horse-drawn machines, the rotating elements were set in motion by the so-called bull wheel, the wheel of the same machine rolling on the ground. This system had many disadvantages. In particular, under unfavorable soil conditions the drive wheel would slip on the surface of the field, which is why the machine worked poorly or stopped altogether. With the advent of tractors, this process was improved. The torque for the machine's working parts began to be taken directly from the tractor engine. But this required special mechanisms. When studying the history of power takeoff devices, first of all we need to remember the steam tractors and portable engines of the mid-19th century, which most often used systems consisting of pulleys and flat belts to transmit torque. Moreover, on an engine the flywheel served as the pulley. But flat belts as a rule were useful only in cases where the operating units were stationary. The engines was installed next to the machine, and the corresponding pulleys of both were connected by flat belts. The first tractors with internal combustion engines were also equipped with flat belt power takeoff pulleys. To indicate the power of such tractors, manufacturers used two numbers, for example, 6050. The first meant the effective power, that is the power on the crankshaft of the engine, accordingly taken from the power takeoff pulley which was attached directly to the crankshaft. It was also called belt power. The second is the power on the tractor drawbar. Over time, when the tractor's traction power became more important than its effective power, drawbar power came to be put in first place. Transmission of rotary motion to mobile machines was a more complex task. Probably the first such power takeoff mechanism was installed on the Reaper designed by the Englishman Aveling and Porter. This machine was a steam tractor with a Bell Reaper attached to it. During operation, the tractor pushed the reaper forward and the transmission of rotary motion to the cutting unit was carried out using a chain thrown from the toothed wheel of the tractor to the corresponding unit of the reaper. When idling and turning, the reaper was lifted by a special crane. The tractor could move forward and backward at two speeds and turn in the desired direction. Its power was 8 horsepower. The 12-foot cut width of the reaper was twice the width of the widest reapers of that time. The Aveling and Porter Bell-type steam reaper was built in 1871, but remained little known until 1876, when it took part in a trial of agricultural machinery organized by the English Royal Agricultural Society. After that, it was put on show at the 1878 Universal Exposition in Paris. However, the steam-powered outfit with a chain power takeoff mechanism did not gain further popularity. The high cost, the difficulty of refueling and replenishing water supplies during operation, bulkiness, fire hazard, etc. were the reasons for this. In addition, compared to a horse-drawn reaper this giant did not show significant economic efficiency. Around the same time, a steam harvester appeared in the United States which used a steam power takeoff. George Stockton Berry, a large Californian farmer, began to think about how to better harvest the crop. His massive combine harnessed by 32 to 36 mules or horses harvested grain slowly. In the summer heat, this work was so hard for the animals that it often led to their death.
As a result in 1886, Barry developed and built a harvester based on a steam locomobile. It could mow and thresh wheat at the same time. In fact, it was a combine. In this machine with a cutting width of 22 feet, the grain after threshing was poured into bags, and the straw was fed as fuel to the steam engine. The combine was serviced by a team of 11 people. The locomobile performed a dual function. First, it moved the harvesting unit across the field. In addition, steam was taken from its steam boiler for an auxiliary steam engine installed directly on the harvester. This auxiliary steam engine set in motion all the working parts of the combine. The system of flexible hoses and associated equipment through which steam was supplied from the locomobile to the auxiliary machine were nothing more than a power takeoff mechanism. Research and practice in mechanical engineering have shown that for the internal combustion engine tractors built at the beginning of the 20th century, the most appropriate concept for transmitting torque to mobile agricultural machinery was the use of a cardan drive. Such a system, with easily connected and disconnected clutches, could provide flexibility when moving the tandem with changing angles of direction. But before getting into agriculture, the Cardan power takeoff system was used in transport. In the early 1900s, the French aeronaut and one of the pioneers of airship construction, as well as the inventor of series of preferred numbers in technology Charles Renard, also worked on the idea of multi-link auto tractor trains for the Army. His designs known under the general name Renard Train consisted of a tractor with a steam or gasoline power plant from which torque was transmitted to the wheels of several trailers with an active axle using a cardan shaft system. Since the French government refused to finance Renard's experiments, he sent several examples of tractor trains to different countries to attract customers' attention to his developments. One of them was sent to the USA in 1904. Unfortunately, on the way a storm washed one of the trailers of this train overboard. The surviving tractor and two trailers, along with the famous 20-mule team, were used for many years to transport Borax from Death Valley in California. The French were also the first to install a power takeoff shaft on agricultural tractors. This was done in 1906. Manufacturer Albert Gogus built a tractor equipped with a power shaft for operating a McCormick binder. During demonstration harvesting operations, Gogus machines amazed the invited farmers with their capabilities. The binder could operate in such unfavorable conditions in which machines driven by a bull's will would certainly have stopped. When overloaded, the machine could process the mown mass even when the tractor was stopped. That is, the power takeoff shaft could work independently of the tractor transmission. Gogus tractor was undoubtedly a revolutionary machine for agriculture, but unfortunately despite the many advantages of the proposed concept, the designer's ingenuity was not rewarded fairly and did not receive recognition. Gogus developments remained in two experimental models until they finally ceased to be paid attention to. After 1908, the designer refused to build tractors and limited himself to the production of agricultural equipment. Only a decade later, Albert Gogus' invention found a second life and gradually replaced or supplemented the traditional side power takeoff pulley on tractors. But this happened on the other side of the ocean. The American company International Harvester knew about Gogus' developments. The French designer had once shown them his invention. But the company's engineers also had their own developments of this innovation. It is known that their engineer Edward Johnston had created a self-powered mower that employed a crude PTO, which was shown at the Paris Exhibition in 1900. Working with colleague Bert Benjamin, who would later pioneer the creation of the Farmel, Johnston created a two-cylinder engine, paired it with a two-speed transmission nestled in a chassis and powering a cutter bar Benjamin had created. Tab the auto mower this innovation featured one of the first power takeoffs on a tractor. Furthermore, this PTO operated independently from the transmission. The auto mower's operator could shift the transmission to a lower gear or to neutral to stop the tractor, but power continued to be supplied to the mower. Thus, 
A farmer could either shift down or stop the tractor entirely if they hit heavy cutting conditions. Johnston's success with the auto mower attracted the attention of Keystone Company in Illinois, which hired him to develop a line of grain and hay equipment. In 1918, International Harvester introduced the International 816, which was optionally equipped with a power takeoff shaft. The company not only added a PTO to a tractor, but also designed implements that would work off the PTO. In subsequent developments by this company, the PTO was available for the McCormick Deering 1020 and 1530. The 1530, which was produced from 1921, would become the first tractor evaluated at the Nebraska tractor test with a PTO. The 1924 Farmel Regular model had the PTO as an integral part of the design. The advancement of the power takeoff shaft, oddly enough, was facilitated by a misfortune that befell farmers in the United States at that time. In the 1920s, the European corn borer had become a significant agricultural pest in the United States, with infestations spreading rapidly across the eastern corn belt and into the Midwest. Arriving in North America in the late 1910s from Europe, the pest devastated corn crops leading the U.S. Department of Agriculture to implement a large-scale program to supply farmers with equipment to combat the stem moth. Research by scientists discovered that shredding corn stalks would expose corn borer larvae to the elements, causing them to perish. The theory had merit. So much so that the USDA ordered a fleet of corn borer tractors to rent out to farmers at $1 an acre. These tractors were paired up with an IHC stubble beater a cornstalk shredder, and a plow. All told, the USDA program purchased a fleet of 444 John Deere DS, 444 IHC 1530s, and 360 Fordsons, all equipped with PTO drives. The USDA's endorsement of the PTO concept inspired manufacturers to offer PTO systems as an option. Farmers also began to show interest in the accessory. The first PTO was built directly into the gearbox and were engaged and disengaged by the tractor transmission clutch. Here is how it was arranged on the Farmel regular tractor. The PTO shaft was mounted on bearings at the bottom of the gearbox. Its gear could move along splines cut into the shaft and thus it engaged with the gear of the main shaft of the gearbox. The gear could be moved along the shaft by a sliding fork using a control lever. The main shaft, through the transmission clutch, was connected to the engine crankshaft. Thus. The PTO received rotational motion from the engine crankshaft. The gear teeth were selected so that the shaft rotation speed was 536 RPM. One end of the shaft came out of the gearbox housing from the rear. The shaft end had splines for connecting the cart-in transmission to the attached machine. It was also possible to install a removable power takeoff pulley in this tractor. For this purpose, a special window was provided in the box, and an additional gear was on the shaft. The configuration discussed above was the simplest. To turn the PTO on or off, the tractor had to be stopped. Also, the PTO stopped working every time the tractor stopped. Some manufacturers equipped their designs with a freewheel clutch to disengage the PTO if the latter rotated faster than the transmission. This sometimes happened when the equipment had high inertia, which created a certain danger. Later, these shortcomings were eliminated in PTO designs with a two-stage clutch. Pressing the clutch pedal halfway disengaged the transmission, and pressing it all the way disengaged both the transmission and the PTO. This configuration allowed the operator to reduce speed or change gears while the PTO was running. In 1928, Hartpar innovated such a design on its models 1224 and 1836. These tractors were offered with an optional PTO that was driven from the right end of the crankshaft. The Hartpar concept had its own clutches with a control lever mounted at the top of the right fender. 
This was the first attempt at creating an independent PTO. Some time later, an independent power takeoff shaft with its own clutch appeared. This mechanism allowed the PTO to be controlled independently of the transmission operating mode. In 1945, the Canadian company Cockshot Farm Equipment was the first to introduce such a system in its Model 30. With the growing popularity of the PTO and the increasing production of tractors with this mechanism, there was a need to standardize it so that both tractors and implements from different manufacturers were interchangeable and easily connected. It was necessary to standardize the speed and direction of rotation of the shaft, the size and shape of the splines, as well as their number, the location of the shaft, etc. In the USA, this was done by the American Society of Agricultural Engineering together with representatives of the manufacturing companies. In 1927, the ASE committee adopted the first PTO standard. The shaft would rotate clockwise and run at 536 plus or minus 10 RPM. The standard shaft speed was chosen based on the fact that the trailed mowers, binders, and grain harvesters of the time, which most needed a PTO, had fastest shaft speed of the cyclobar, which was 500 to 600 RPM at normal forward speed. The shaft would rotate counterclockwise when viewed from the tractor seat. The output shaft would have six splines and a diameter of 1 and 3 eighths inch, 35 millimeters, and may be considered for tractors up to 87 horsepower, 65 kilowatts. Then later, additional standards were adopted for higher speeds and powers, with other shaft diameters and number of splines, while the original PTO speed of 536 RPM was rounded up to 540. In our era, manufacturers offer power takeoff systems activated by a button or selector switch. 